is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Fudge Mop. But this is the Elder Scrolls podcast. I'm Scott, and here with Michael and Drew, as always. And today we are talking all about the mysterious giants. And surely you are familiar with giants, having played Skyrim. You've been sent into space many a times when you've come across them. But which one of you guys would like to start? Well, with some... they're really big. They are big. Yeah. I mean, yeah, as you said, everyone will be familiar with them from their mm. adventures through Skyrim. But there's more to them than just being mindless, mm. mammoth cheese-eating yeeters. You know, the, the high elves spend a lot of time <laughs> trying to find their way back to the heavens, back to Aetherius. When all you have to do is go and piss off a giant. You know, yeah. that's all it takes. Um, yeah, bug- bugger the old Riemann space programs <laughs> and sunbirds and stuff. They've got it. <laughs> That's it. And I will tell you what, Elder Scrolls Online has really been playing on that meme. You can find this text in there all about giants from a Bosma, Benori, and the Wanderer talking about how they could send a wood elf far, like with their smash, surely, and all this. It says, um, they then they swing huge clubs and launch even a burly Nord over field and stream. Like it's, you know, obviously clearly a reference to what was happening in Skyrim. Well, it'd be a good mode of transport for the Bosma, seeing as they couldn't chop down trees to make carts and things like this. So yeah, true. Th- yeah. There's, this quote, there's this quote here. Uh, he concludes, I would say that wood elves can travel great distances when launched by a giant's club. Mm. My- <laughs> okay, mate. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, let's get to um, some of the real basics that you're probably, uh, you guys are probably familiar with. So... You, you see giants crossing the tundras in, in Whiterun. And uh, we, we've also seen Rothgarian giants, just very similar. And as a general rule, they are mammoth herders primarily. They're pretty peaceful for the most part. And they're quite like reclusive. They just stay to their own camps and so on. Um, and they do have this rather intimate connection with the mammoths. Um, the mammoths kind of provide like companionship as well as the milk and stuff to make their cheese, the mammoth cheese, which is a big thing. They also do have, uh, apparently giants know how to make mammoth tusk powder. um, And it's probably just because they're big and strong and can crush those tusks into tiny pieces. But basically their camps, they're they're not dumb beasts like, interesting, we'll get to this a bit later, but frost giants we sort of see a lot of the time and they're kind of just, we don't really see their... um, like civilization around them, the campsites for for the for the giants, they'll you like there'll be tripwires mm. with like mammoth bones. There'll be all kinds of ornaments and decorations on the stones and painted on things. So they've got cultural symbols, and you know with places like Secunda's Kiss, we see formalized uh, burial sites. So where they'll go to die. Well, I don't know if they bury, but like funeral sites, dying sites. So yeah. the giants will go there to die, and they're all decorated in sort of the cultural motifs and stuff and they also have like scarification like they scar these symbols into their own skin as well so they do have some like spiritual connection and totem and they even like do it on the mammoth tusks as well of the living mammoths to sort of like symbolize a connection i guess perhaps and maybe that's sort of like a a, a mutual thing in the way that it's carved into their calves um tusks and then carved into their own skin so Mm. they are they are but essentially a, a nomadic group of mammoth herders and stuff that we see and they have different campsites but we've also seen at different times in history that there have been more and uh and we've seen like proper clans and and a bit more um combative versions of giants i guess compared to what we've we've seen um so there's the legendary tale of um sinma um who fought isgrimor and isgrimor killed him all great with wuthrad and everything that is an interesting story actually when you speculate about what giants may have looked like before or how embellished these kind of stories are because one of the um parts of that story says he grappled his grimoire seeking to squeeze life away a roar of laughter was the answer the monster received. Isgrimor's forehead and knee delivered two mighty blows. Sinmur screeched and fell to his knees before our lord. So it's kind of a bit weird to me because unless Isgrimor was a really big fellow, how would you be able to headbutt and knee? Like, unless you were headbutting their leg or kneeing their leg. I think, it's wouldn't just, it be like he picked, if he's picking him up, choking him, wouldn't it be like, 
mm. head butts him and then knees uh, him in the chin or something. Could, could be. Because when it said grappled, I imagined it like on the floor, like pushed him on the floor and jumped on uh, him. Okay. But then it says Sinmo screeched and fell to his knees, which implies mm. his grimoire is like standing up. Mm. Um, but if you if you go by this time too, it's sort of like Sinmo is like kind of like a high chieftain of all of these giants who were more spread at the time of Isgromor, which also means they were there kind of when the uh, the Snow Elves would have been there living peacefully, as well as other needs and stuff as, as well, like needed groups. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so I guess I, I guess that kind of... And we'll, we can also just quickly mention that they have... So there's, there's clan systems and they're usually led by a chieftain, but there's also examples of matriarchal ones. Um, and... You know, they're, they're quite territorial, as you've experienced plenty of times in Skyrim. Um, and then they've fought back and forth over territory. Sometimes they'll grab a little bit. But yeah, as you can expect. But what's interesting here is to actually speculate their origins. And that's what's most interesting about the giants, I think, um, is their, the speculation surrounding where they're from. Because there's the, the simple basic thing is people go, oh, pointy ears, therefore elven descended but there's plenty of things with pointy ears that aren't elven necessarily in the elder scrolls such as goblins for example um but the chief of all the theories um is the idea that they are from atmora along so the uh, there's this idea that ancient ancient atmorans were these massive tall people who were very very intelligent but then apparently there was this sort of warring and division and they separated into two people where you have the smaller nords who would retain their intelligence but not the physical stature and the giants the reverse they retain their stature but not the intelligence and you know, that, that's a guess. People could dismiss that and say there is no common... I, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think. Like, Well, there's the, you know, there, there's also the idea that um, the Nords, you know, th this, is, this happened on Skyrim at least, but kind of drove them up into the mountains. You know, when you hear the stories of Isgrimor and his companions just killing tons of um, frost giants, um, being driven into the mountains and kind of like being pulled away from their civilizations and being forced to live nomadically in really harsh terrain. You can imagine they kind of like become more primitive naturally as a result of that as well. Kind of like the Minotaurs mm. in a yeah. way. It could be. Uh, talking about frost giants specifically, I don't really think they're as related to giants as they are to frost trolls, especially given them having kind of multiple eyes. And their their skulls definitely look quite troll like. Um, but yeah. The the idea as well, I really like that they may even have blue blood, like just based on um, Isgrimor's story and supposedly the markings that yeah. the companions would cover their bodies in these markings of their blood, I which did have uh, like spiral like designs, which normal giants are quite fond of actually. Yeah, did they do it? I can't actually remember if they had the blue blood in the sky in Skyrim. I don't think so. I would. I swear I'd remember. I would blue remember blood a everywhere. blue, yeah, a blue blood texture. I feel like. Yeah. Regardless, anyway, you know. So the frost giants might be a little bit of a separate one. Um, yeah. A bit of a. Th I, I think they're distinct from the actual giants. I don't think they have a common at Moran thing, if the giants even are at Moran. So if, if we were to suppose this sort of idea, the the idea is that they split in at Mora from, so you sort of get your, the at Morans that become Nords and you get your traditional sort of giants. Um, and then they would have come in different migrations. But if we remember, we've got Nidic groups that all come from at Mora first. And then you kind of also got giants i guess the giants would have left and, and have come um unless the split was some really early old elner face stuff before even like the sundering it, of the it continents it definitely could be especially considering it sounds like the giants were already there mm. so like, i you know mm, isgrimor i know isgrimor wasn't like the first at Morin kind of like i mean when he returned and was slaughtering everything mm. um but I mean, the giants feel very established, at least by the sounds of the story in Skyrim. By the time he's there, that you know they've got chieftain societies. Mm. He's fighting against them. Uh, they, they, if they split from it, Morans, it would be a very long 
mm. very long time ago. Unless they least... came over with the needs. So, <laughs> but also giants in ships. Like I know the giants in Skyrim that we see are a set size, but there's also examples in the lore. I mean, you look at the, the Legends card art of Ancient Giant. Mm. Um, I don't know how well they would go on a ship if they would have a, so, a giant ship for giant people. Or... To, to preface this, for a lot of the giants' topics, we, we're going to have to somewhat delve into uncanon sources though so like a lot of michael kirkbride's writings which kind of get canonized in law sources like giants of discourse seems to kind of canonize some of his ideas as well as seeing painted cows or seeing a painted cow in skyrim is a good reference to his stories but in one of kirkbride's writings it says here is why the giants came from old atmora up 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 there across the northern ice back in the gone to twilight now age of myth so the idea is that rather than sailing on ships, which would seem really unusual, especially if they're as big as they seem, this is when either there was a landmass or the ice was, or it was so cold that the ice bridged Skyrim to Atmora that they, they were able to just walk. That's how yeah, I imagine things. it happened. I mean, I love the ice theory. I think, so I'm personally, I personally think it is, they're definitely from Atmora at the very least. The the the, the relation to the, to the Nords could be debated and stuff, but... They're definitely from Atmora, given that there's two accessible ways, like that ice bridge one you say, and ships, given that we know that the sea giants have mm. giant ships the that they've built that are, that, that are, yeah, the size of islands, so they've built them for themselves. Mm. So it's easily that they could have come across and then they've degenerated into a primitive, more primitive culture. But perhaps back in the day, and arguably so, if you look at Sinma being a high chieftain of all of these clans and he was a more formidable force, their society could have been more advanced than the ones we have today same sort of go as we mentioned like for the minotaurs yeah absolutely 100 percent. And, and that is a good thing to bring up the sea giants so they were added in elder scrolls online in mm -hmm. skyrim and they they almost look like um giant sea elves in the term that they're it, just in the sense that their skin is a bit like bluer i don't think they're related to the marimar at all the sea, the sea elves kind of do have as much as it's blue they kind of do have a very whitish kind of skin it's it, like a it depends word. on the model like there's a few yeah. different ones out there but yeah 100 percent um on that i don't think they're related to the sea elves i think it is just circumstantial that they look like that and they do also have um magic which is quite unusual um, to see giants using. They, they have a kind of water magic, uh, well, which again, we don't know these old giants, if they were more advanced, like minotaurs are speculated to have been more advanced, if perhaps they did use magic. Well, funnily enough, actually, at, at this time, even in the second era, so which is when we experience the sea giants in ESO, um, they do, by the virtue of having ships and you look at their armor and weaponry and stuff, it's much more advanced than the giants you see in the time of Skyrim and what they're doing. So the sea giants perhaps have, might have been sort of an, maybe an early offshoot or something that sort of retained some of the civilization. Mm. It was um, like, you know, the ability to make more advanced armor and ships and sailing and stuff. And, and culturally they're quite different because they're much more warlike. They're all into the raiding um, and they can even, hunt as well. Yeah, they, they make harpoon-based weapons and kill whales yeah. and stuff. That seems well, a lot harder, you mm. would think, than just herding mammoths around the plains of <laughs> near Whiterun. Yeah, well, that's like it once again sort of a circumstantial thing for them. But you know, being sea giants going in the sea, that the whales became their main form of of sustenance and stuff. And the way that and you can sort of the hunt how they eat is really just the ideological difference almost you can see like they're peaceful giant herders and they're relatively peaceful yet territorial as you know you can be and then there's the sea giants which are like they're all about hunting these whales and kind of like their whales have been described as like bloody and dying of shock and stuff and they're already ripping it apart and stuff that also kind of mimics how they kind of act in their raiding and stuff but th there's an important point to bring up here too because there are half giant kin of the of the sea giants and normal giants yes well because so we see that and then we've got there's the lyris titanborn story where her father is a half giant so all of these kinds of half giant kind of things to me sort of implies a little bit more that that they do have some common ancestry in that way that they can sort of share and that there's these half breeds and yeah. one thing about the sea giants as well is depending when we think the giants lost their intelligence or lost most of their intelligence this uh this kirkbride text talks about how the nords fell into fighting and drove the giant kin up into the mountain tops 
And then, then it goes on to say, and when they came down from the mountains again, they were a bit different than we Nords remembered, or perhaps we'd forgotten much, but they would not speak to us anymore. They'd only smile and stomp and take out stuff. And I imagine that perhaps mm. when, when some of the giants were driven into the mountains, it's possible that some other giants were driven away and decided to make a life out on the sea. sea. Perhaps they adapted somewhat in a way that the sea elves did. And as a result of their prey being much more difficult to catch, you know, like needing to kill whales to survive, maybe they became more intelligent and more magically gifted as a result of it. Oh, for sure. That, that's definitely a theory that I, I could agree with. And, and I mean, look, we don't know just how intelligent they are because they have their own kind of language. Some have like learnt to speak a bit of basic Tamrielic before, just your normal giants. But the other thing is, it's kind of like the variety of giants and examples of their intelligence is kind of indicative that they're a complex race and not just a, a kind of like brutish beast because there's there's so much variance among them like for example it some of them like people like to categorize things with everything so they're like oh giants big and angry that's it or they say giants are mostly peaceful keep to themselves they're territorial but like a lot of the the races in the elder scrolls they're also individualistic like there are mm. examples of giants who come and steal things Mm. They're, they're, they're not like, oh, I keep to myself. It's like, no, I'm a thief. And if you let me, I will take something of yours, whether it be livestock or some valuable item that I just want to have, or I will encroach on your territory if given the opportunity. So to me, Preach. it's 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 kind of like the, the actions of a race that can think for themselves and aren't just programmed like, you know how you would say a creature is just like, I do mm. this, this is my habitat. They're a bit more complex than that, clearly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's even examples of them being gladiators and bodyguards at times mm. for, for others and stuff. So they, they're, they're definitely on the level of like, funnily enough, some of, one of the wikis um, has them under like as a beast race, but I don't really think of them as a beast race because of at more and potential at more mm. heritage and stuff. And they don't really look similar to any creature or anything. They're kind of just a giant humanoid type thing and when it comes to stealing livestock rather than just kind of like slaying them like beasts or like separating them from your stock um a lot of nordic farmers would would pick one peace offering cow and paint swirls on it as we as we mentioned before and design it in the same motifs that you see the giants quite like that they do with their mammoths and on their skin and this would be like a peace offering so it's like you here you have this cow and please don't steal from us and it seemed to work a lot of the times it's funny that uh, yeah. that that there is an example of where kirkbride's law or you know in more in broadly out of canon law has been sort of canonized mm. by skyrim and so on and like there is that kind of two-way street like i wonder if any ideas we've ever said in elder scrolls law videos will get like canonized or something because like even it read more recently the uh depiction of uh, alicia in the Greymore expansion with um the the horns and the more ancient sort of look got canonized mm. and that's an actual statue and the thing and that was a fan art depiction that has been that caught on and got popular mm. so I think we, all three of us, need to be canonized in Elder Scrolls 6. <laughs> if, if we're not in the game, I'll be very upset. Mocap would, us and put be, us here. That would be put so us in weird. There. Just a bunch yeah. of scholars in a library. I don't care. Just, just something. Yeah, a couple of scamps. Yeah. <laughs> oh that's that, an easy way to do it making them a daedra and you can kind of just give them like nod names like or very similar ones you know what i mean like, yeah because scamps can have like funny names anyway so so the other thing too while we're on the topic of out of law stuff there is a drawing by michael kirkbride that says talos farewells the king of atmora i'll put it up and you see the king of atmora and he's a giant he's massive and so mm -hmm. on and i wonder too like i kind of I don't know if we know enough about sea giants and stuff yet, but I wonder if they are sort of touching base with like Atmora and so on, and that, that, that maybe giants are some of the last civilization on Atmora at maybe, this time. Maybe. And the thing is as well, with the the art by Kirkbride, you see that the giant is so big. And like I was talking about before, though, that may seem like uh, an exaggeration or like that's not possible. We've seen Skyrim's in uh, giants in Skyrim. They're not nearly that big. But then the Legends, the Legends card comes along. And as much as it could be symbolic, generally speaking, I take Legends like card art to be canon and kind yeah. of like that's what it is. And that giant is huge, See, like absolute monster, which does 
you must admit, go against the idea that some became smaller, or less intelligent, and some became these bigger, brutish... Um, sorry, some became smaller and smarter, and some became bigger and dumber, because that giant starts bigger than everything. Yeah, well, like, but it could be like some... That could be some giant in at Mora of some... As it says, ancient giant. Like the ancient giants, just in general, they could have been massive and then slowly over time they've, they degenerated, but then there was the, obviously, divide that we see. Mm. Um, just based on know. their appearance, the, the large ancient giant does look smart. You know, like it, mm. it, it, I mean, it just looks like an upscale Nord. Yeah, I, I do, Um, because I do kind of like the idea of the big, massive ancient giants that would have used to exist in a more sort of uh, mythical sense, in a more, almost like more godlike or demigodlike in the way. Because when you're talking about Atmora, you're talking about thousands of years ago, and you're talking about this mythic era where crazier stuff is happening. You know, you, you've got Daedric princes walking the plains. So yeah. Can, do you it, know what I mean? It, it could be a depiction from a time where the laws of... I guess physics, for lack of better words, were less stable, you know, like things were like warping and growing and moving around and time wasn't constant. Like we don't know how old, ancient is a broad mm. a broad term. And one thing that's kind of sad is it, it does seem like, uh, as you said, it's kind of mythical is that it, it pretty much is becoming myth now because you see descriptions of Atmora as it's changed over over the eras. You know, um, one of Isgrimor's companions describes it as like the, the green summers of Atmora. And uh, whereas now it's it's considered to be pretty much uninhabited. It's, it's frozen over and there's no sign of human habitation. There are rumors of it in the third era, but also expeditions that come up with nothing. I do love a Vex quote of calling it uh, the land of frozen bearded kings mm. but the interesting thing about frozen bearded kings does not necessarily mean nord mm. that can also mean giant they all have beards and stuff so there could mm. be this massive giant and then you know and say so but like yeah i kind of like the idea that sea giants are sort of like the last kind of inhabitants of Atmora and they sort of become like a uh, nomadic sort of circling around the seas of Atmora and stuff in be and in between Tamriel and stuff because they just sort of like attached. Yeah, you know, they can kind homeland. of move slightly south when it gets very cold and wintry because that, in a way you could almost consider the way Vivek describes those frozen bearded kings as imagine you were to see Atmora in the fourth era and you go there and the frozen bearded kings, they're statues, they're giants turned statues from the cold mm. and they're frozen in their thrones. And, you know, yeah. that'd be really cool imagery. And it's, and it, ma it makes it much more kind of um, bittersweet to, to see the less intelligent giants that are more abundant in Skyrim. That's like, oh, this is you know the last remnants of them in a sense. The the other thing, this is this is another thing to support the the giant heritage stuff, but it is just obviously we know that uh, Skyrim and and the Nords and stuff have a huge inspiration from Scandinavians and Vikings and so on, and giants were a massive part of that real world mythology, um, and a lots of them. There's lots of half giants and connections and stuff. So I'm just sort of like. There's a good chance that, you know, this is sort of uh, the mm. actuality of the situation that they mm. are sort of related, at least on some sort of mythical um, level. But if we look at giants from other places, um, mm. I mean, at least examples of other things kind of called giants, you do have the, I believe it's the Iliadi or the Iliadi. Yeah, I've, I've said Iliadi before, but yeah. yeah. And they're they're basically like a a fairy right well in one of the books they are described alongside like it, i think it's literally a book called the fairies or the yeah, fae or something, something and like it, that and it and it includes them as oh other names include ilyadi fay this so on um and they're supposed to be these big giants taller than trees with many many eyes on the somerset isles that are now extinct but when i hear many many eyes it also makes me think of the frost giants. yeah same same so I wonder if maybe the frost giants are actually more akin to something like a fairy, fae kind of thing, if the giants or the Iliadi are in relation. Or maybe you could just, I can easily imagine this, and I'm sure everyone listening can imagine this. You know how a frost giant kind of looks like a frost troll, especially with lots of eyes, mixed with a giant? Mm -hmm. Just skin it to a normal troll, like the brown one, and then chuck it in a forest. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, to, to me, that could yeah. easily be what it is, like a, a, a frost troll, but coloured more, more like a like bark, like a, a darker fur. 
There is a whack. There's there's one like little inconsistency between the frost giants. Is the frost giant like cast stack and stuff? They have five eyes in Blood Moon. So the frost giant cast stack has five eyes. They only have four in the new in the newer and oh, and then so does cast stack when you summon him because mm. he's just a frost giant type. But frost giants are incre- and trolls have three eyes. Yeah, but that's when it's kind of like the troll. Like at least that kind of looks like the old the old um. The old frost giant just with two extra eyes at the bottom. But mm. regardless, like they have been shown to be intelligent. Like we do have the, you know, Karstag in Solstheim with his sort of like frozen kingdom and stuff. And he has his little thing going on there. But for the most part, the only time we've ever seen frost giants are just in the Forgotten Vale, which understandably it's a quiet area where they haven't been slaughtered by the companions. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, can't, I kind of vibe the idea. I don't know. What, what do you guys think in like... I think they're kind of the Ilyadi sort of fairy kind of thing. A bit more in the way like, you know, there's like earth bones or, or spirits or that kind of thing. They're like more nature related. They're not like a descendant of... Well, that's the weird thing about fairies in general and considering the Iliadi to be um, of the same strain is that when I think of fairies, I almost feel like they don't really exist materially in the world. So it's, it's almost like they're purely mythological or spiritual or what. So it's... It's almost hard to say. It's hard to say what fairies are like in um, in the Elder Scrolls universe because you kind of like you hear bits and pieces and you see kind of like pixies and things like that, but you don't really get a very good idea of what it means to be a fairy. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. I mean, they could they could be like just more mythological, or it could just be that any group seeing a big thing calls it a, a giant. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if. Yeah, if it's a a giant, almost humanoid walking thing, no matter what it looks like, most people could end up calling it something similar, despite it having no relation whatsoever to the giants of the north. The Mm, other thing I was going to say is there's also in elsewhere um, this, like, I think it's the Hall of Colossus. Yeah. Which is just rumored to be built by giants. I don't know if there's a whole lot of evidence for it. Because the name for that, I'm pretty sure, because because originally the Hall of Colossus is where the where um, Tiber Septum's rebuilding the Numidium. So that's why I thought it was called the Halls of the Colossus, like the big colossal golem kind of thing. Yeah. But then, but then later it was that uh, houses the the dragons. I'm pretty sure for the elsewhere with like yeah. the Wrath Stone and stuff, uh, or Wraith Stone or whatever it was called. Um, but yeah, and then I, it could have been built by giants. It's a nice idea to think, oh, there were these cool ancient giants in elsewhere a long, 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 yeah, long built, time ago. Built to but... honor an ancient race of giants. But again, it's, it is it is a theory. It could be. We well, just don't if, know. If you want to look at where in the lore giants have said to be um, f- through Valenwood and up through Cyrodiil, High Rock, Skyrim kind of stuff. So they're pretty widespread. So Valenwood's only next door to elsewhere. So it's like, could be, yeah. Like mm. there's nothing um, super set on it i don't think but but primarily giants seem like a very skyrim thing like they have their heaviest presence yeah well they didn't put them in cyrodiil and stuff i mean they're in the high rock and stuff in like daggerfall games and stuff like that and and obviously we've seen them in the rothgarian region but yeah they seem pretty restricted to uh northern regions and the ones i imagine in valenwood where it's sort of the same right um kind of realm of like centaurs and minotaurs and stuff that can live there just because they get a natural protection and they're not bothered by civilization as much the bosma are pretty easy going and it's like what i was saying before a lot of the more intelligent races they have free will some will just go and do something you know not every single one it's Mm -hmm. like when we were talking about the sea elves one of them despite you know they tend to all hate the the high elves one of them has a relationship with a high elf yeah despite all the you know upbringing and being told that you know high elves are the worst thing in the world people people are different <laughs> and the same thing with giants mm. you know i think it's funny imagining the early giants coming to to skyrim and and encountering the dwarf well encountering the dwemer <laughs> and yeah. calling them dwarves and that name just sticking which is a cool yeah. cool bit of the lore true. about the fact that you know dwemer are no smaller um not noticeably smaller than any of the other elven races yet we it's so commonly f- call them dwarves <laughs> yeah it's so sure. funny that that's caught on just because like at that sort of time when like Dwemer would have probably been in contact with dwarves like in Skyrim and so on like 
they've just sort of firmly been known as Dwemer by like by the Kymer or by the the Snow Elves at the time or so on. Like it's just funny that the Dwarven name sort of stuck. And I think because the they're big... the Deep Elves, you know what I mean? Like yeah, but the, the Deep, deep but... Elves, and then it's like oh no, you're dwarves. Yeah, but the only reason they call it it's only to like because it's a familiar fantasy trope kind of thing. Like yeah. you know, dwarves they want to associate with like oh industrious and underground, yeah. just like other yeah, fantasy exactly. things. Yeah, but exactly, yeah. But it it is um cool. But I, I I definitely think they are. I think the Sea Giants is a really cool addition. But the silvery blue skins, you know, like you said, it can just be to distinguish them and the sort of like you know culturally culturally different because they fall on they fall on sieged um, solitude at one mm. point. Like they're not. I, I wish we saw some of these cool. Th- I know they're adding all the cool stuff to ESO because they keep having more ideas and they're like I've got to keep making expansions and putting stuff out. You but know, it they, seems they like... don't. They sorry, I was just gonna say they don't just have the water magic too. There's shock magic and frost magic as well. Mm. Very, yeah. very sea themed. Yeah, but I I just feel like that because the virtue of ESO, so much cool shit has happened in such a small period of time, <laughs> and the rest of history is blank. It's like, like all of these giant. There's giant invasions, sea giant invasions. There's like. Uh, sea elf invasions like we were talking about before we're seeing all this cool stuff and then by the time we get to <laughs> an Elder Scrolls mainline game it's all gone mm. yeah they need yes. to just make it a dragon break so that in the future they can just be like all that weird stuff that supposedly happened did it actually happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> they could just chalk it off if they find it's too that, crazy to go with I really wonder if they will refer to it as a dragon break at that time like put in a dragon break in Elder Scrolls 6 more mm. to like explain it like yeah perhaps it's the final dlc for eso before elder scrolls 6 comes out is it results in a dragon break it's the final quest line or something maybe. and it just like somehow or- rewrites that whole era of all of this eso stuff what one, one i don't one think like- they will no though. no they wouldn't they, will. <laughs> they wouldn't i don't think it needs to either because because no. i was just thinking why do we need a dragon break because the daggerfall it's not like there's multiple endings to the eso stuff no, it's just crazy. Outside of the three banner yeah. war stuff. Stop but... getting so logical about his dragon break <laughs> joke, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I agree. Um, you know, something else that's interesting about the sea giants, right? Uh, kind of linking them to Atmorans, you could say. But there's this sea giant kind of um, leader, but it, he has a an Atmoran name, seemingly, like Izumgar. Mm. Or Yismgar, like the Y S M G A R. That's quite Nordic and Yeah. Well I guess so Sinmer is as well the other named giant in that Isgrimor slew. Like that's the other thing, but yeah, like giants in general seem to all have like similar name names in general. Hmm. So I don't know if you go and find the ones that were supposedly in elsewhere and they've got like Khajiit names. I highly doubt it. Yeah, I don't think so. Which, again, supports the idea that they're not just taking a, potentially a name convention because it's just in the area. I, I, I do subscribe to this idea that they seem very likely linked to it, Morans. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure, like, I feel like that's the the most accurate mm. conclusion. Like, otherwise, it's just like, or you could simply go, oh, they're just a native creature. But that's boring as hell. <laughs> <laughs> like... But I kind of buy that theory in regards to the frost giants and, and other sort of things that aren't those. But mm, for sure, I, I like I like reading the stories about the sea giants. How it really just feels like a, a mini man walking among big men, like talking mm. about their campfire being like a bonfire and like how big their ship is and and things like this. Yeah, I'm also curious how this half stuff happens so there's like half giants among the sea giants so what are they doing like raiding and you know doing the deed doing the deed i guess but like i don't know i don't think it's my first choice right well, see you know see. you know lyris right yeah her uh her mom died during childbirth yeah, yeah. so it really sounded like she just exploded out of her you know <laughs> but see, it, thanks it, for that even... mental image <laughs> well it's not impossible that nords may have may just like coexist with these sea giants in their civilizations they may actually have men amongst them i mean there's there's no evidence to say they definitely don't right mm. so you know who knows i don't know why i mean i i'm just such, i really like giants yeah just in mythologies in general they're like so cool but just like just make a really big but they they sound 
mythological. I think they're inherently cool and mythological just in the way that like, you know, gods on, on a uh, philosophical level and stuff or a metaphysical level, like they're bigger, they're greater, they're bigger souls I mean, and stuff. But it, It's the classic Jack and the Beanstalk story that captivated kids for so many years, right? Mm, mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, here's uh, one fun fact about the giants. The, uh, the artist who who came up with the giants, a, a guy, well, I don't know if he came up with them, but, you know, made the models for them in Skyrim, a guy called Jonah Loeb. Um, he modeled the face of the giant in Skyrim after his dad. And um, I'll say, I'll have to send you the photo. I think he tweeted it out. There was a photo of him and his dad and his dad looks exactly like the Skyrim giants. <laughs> it's freakish. <laughs> that, that's that's so pretty good. sick. I want to uh, look that up to get immortalized. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. But I'll make sure we got that so we can put it underneath uh, the podcast. You find yeah, it? I see it. I see it. That's so funny. <laughs> Wait, hold on. That's pretty wacky. That's the guy's called Jonah and then L-O-B-E. I just typed in Skyrim Jonah giant face on yeah. Google Images. Yeah. And it's like the fir- fourth image across. Yeah, but there you go. No, oh, that's a beast. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see it. I see it. <laughs> Man. But yeah, yeah, I mean, is that fun fact to end it or do we have anything else to be spoken about? I think I, that the giants aren't the most expansive one. It's a lot of... It mostly but, covers it yeah. unless we were to talk more about just, um, again, the general giant stuff we said at the start about their kind of culture that we know in Skyrim. But I feel like you covered most of it quite quickly. Yeah, um, just... But, well, because most of it anyway is kind of like most people have kind of seen it. Is It is what you've seen. Like there's nothing too complex to it. It's just... Another one of those distinctions, it's important to say, they're not just some monster. They clearly have their you know, own sort of societal kind of cultural things. Mm. So, as you know, and the primitive kind of element could be just like we said with Minotaurs, a degeneration, and not that- due to physically degenerating, but rather being pushed out by civilizations. And, and they're still know. pushed out. I mean, yeah. you look at the bounties you can get in Skyrim. If there's a giant that's kind of wandering near civilian territory, understandably, even though you feel sorry for them from an outside perspective, if I was some farmer with kids running around on a cabbage field, I would probably want the giant that's come over to walk around and stalk out my property taken care of too, you know? Yeah. You can't really blame them, but you can tell why they don't really have a chance to become particularly advanced. Oh, uh, sorry. Go. Oh, no, you go. I was just saying an- another thing, just more at more and myth. Like obviously, there's there's giants, but it was in one of Isgrimor's things that Isgrimor was said to have collected the laments of giant oh, wives yeah. while in yeah. at Mora, and then twisted those into the bowstring for his fabled bow. But that's that's obviously more confirmation that he was slaying giants back in at Mora. Mm. Um, it sounds making cool. Those giant mm. wives cry and so. turning the yeah laments into bowstrings it's just one of those poetic things that gets me i just really like his it. bow yeah. called long launcher yeah <laughs> cool. really? yeah that's its name i don't know i don't actually find the name particularly <laughs> cool it kind of sounds like a meme to be honest i mean that's exactly what a bow should do <laughs> i know but like it's my long launcher you know? oh yeah that's uh, hold on is that uh oh no no sorry it's it's not yeah <laughs> Oh, good. I was thinking, I'm like, is that the is that the from the black book that one? But no, it's the stories from. It's from Fragmente Abyssum Hermaeus mm. Morris. Yeah, that, is that uh, out of out of canon or is that canon? No, it's Elder Scrolls oh, it's Online. Okay. Oh, right. It well, is Elder Scrolls Online. One thing I will say in the Songs of the Return, Volume Twenty Seven, the story with Sinmir, um, or Sinma, they do talk about a half giant. One of the opening sentences is like, many a brave companion had already fallen to the giants, stalwart Valder and sly Hakra, long may their spirits be honored, fell assaulting the wily half giant. Many others now trod the blessed pathways to sovereign God. Can I so, throw- so it sounds like there was more than just your normal giants around. Could throw something at you. Maybe obviously this, maybe the distinction wasn't as like, maybe Isgrimor could have even been like sort of, much more half giant kind of size and some of the ancient Atmorans were even bigger. Like just even just little things. If you look at, I know he's a god, but he is still an Atmoran god, but um, uh, Sun out the in front of the Whalebone Bridge, like that sort of mm. bigger kind of guy. Like may, maybe some of them back in the day, half giants were more common as there were more giants around, but maybe they didn't. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I mean, another cool thing is, uh, which Scott, I imagine you're quite like, is uh, giants have been observed having their matriarchies where the giantess has the greatest authority. And there's even like 
I erotic. <laughs> you know, but like I'm going into they have an erotic charade in some in some places called the king and the amorous giantess. Um, mm. enacted with bedroom stilts and large furry mittens. So you can imagine that, you know, they may not be able to unlock their jaw like a snake, but still, it's a, some pretty big women. I <laughs> yeah, just thought you might want to know about that. I feel like someone with only an English voice can say mittens in the best way possible. <laughs> Beautiful. Mitten. Yeah. But yeah, I think that I think that pretty much wraps it I up. Got, I got one more thing. One more. One mm-hmm. more little piece of food for thought that also kind of says that they're from it more. Can I have a drink with it as well? Some drink for thought as well? Because I'm a bit some, parched. Can have some sides as well. He's getting know, thirsty uh, after that amorous challenge. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He is. Anyway, is it their skin? Look at their skin. They're like really pale. Like if you look at all of the things in the Northern Territories that are kind of from their snow elves as well, they're pale. Sorry, what was sorry? What was this for? In just that to? giants have really, really pale skin. They walk around mm. in the sun all day on the plains. They're not getting a tan. They However, have that kind of grey, whitish skin tone. But the sea giants have got like a really dark blue skin tone. Yeah, and but they're, they're from s- further north. But they're sea giants, man. They've got to be water. Oriented. <laughs> it's almost like camouflage more, more than snow and ice oriented. To be fair, also the Dwemer and Kymer are just as north as the snow elves are. I feel like a lot of it when it comes Wait, to Elder Scrolls... you can't talk about the Kaima. They, they migrated there. Plus, it, it, Yeah, the, but it depends. When did the Felm migrate there? Is sort of so thing. a lot of the or time... And the Nords like, also migrated It there. seems like they no, kind no, of blend into their surroundings. So the reason the sea giants would be dark blue is if they're hunting whales and they're these big gleaming white things... Um, mm. that it's going to be a bit more difficult to hunt your Cause prey. Because like the, the, the whales have got like their big like, you know, little telescope thing looking out yeah. the top of the water looking for Look, it. I'm just, I guess <laughs> I'm just trying to help the Elder Scrolls what, lore What I'm sense. saying, what I'm saying as well is like the Kaimal obviously had their skin changed by entities like outside yeah. of the mortal plane. But the Dwemer didn't. And the Dwemer were just as normal. And the Dwemer lived underground. Case closed. Well, no, they, they wasn't exclusively under. <laughs> Although, Not if they lived underground, they'd have like, they they should have paler skin because they don't get as much vitamin actually, D. Like you know, speaking as a as a basement dweller myself, you know, you, you're very <laughs> pale. If you, I mean, how many the... how many Dwemer have you seen though? Not really many. Jaegrim looks pretty normal, and he's got he movies. looks pretty normal, does he? <laughs> I mean, like. <laughs> You know what I mean? He's yeah, he, no, he doesn't. He doesn't have like an unusual like Kaima or dark elf skin tone that would make you go, "Whoa!" It's just kind of like a mm. generic Caucasian looking skin tone. But yeah, I, I don't know how much there is to the. It's I don't know if it's about vitamin D in the Elder Scrolls. I think <laughs> well, yeah, I they don't have. Stop but, the, <laughs> I guess uh, yeah, Magnus is rift like, in the sky. It's not exactly all I was saying. All I was trying to say, I think we've overcomplicated things. Was that the giants are pale. And that they're yeah. from an area where people tend and and other elves and men tend to be pale. From I this bet you area. regret bringing that up. <laughs> Why? With the way really. just how off track we all got with it. Ah, uh, whatever. People uh, like it. I like yeah. it. Good discussion. But now I think we can officially wrap things up. Oh, well, it's good we got that point out of the it's way. Really good, <laughs> mate. You didn't. I said it would be food for thought. You said yeah. you want to drink for thought, and then I put dessert for thought. So. That's all your fault. Thanks everyone for watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's been twist. it's been a lot of fun. Um, tell us what you think in the comments below. Follow us on Twitter. Social media links are always in the description. And we look forward to nerding out with you all again very soon. <laughs>